But I remember I had the, you know, them Sabutio things. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I used to play with the Sabutio sets and that. And I remember, I remember Ali um, as a kid, um, all these goals and stuff like that. And uh, so when I, when obviously when I met Stevie, when they they got in contact with me and I met Stevie, yeah. and we, we, he he done the, all the the presentation all that sort of stuff. Then I got a text from him, and he basically said, because I had to go to Tenerife and meet the lads. So he texted me, nine or ten. That was it. He's yeah. talking about squad numbers, nine or ten. So I text back, nine. And he thought, yeah, I thought so, because he knows. Do you know what I mean? So, and then obviously since then I've spoken that. I said, because I remember when I signed for Tottenham, they gave me a list of the squad, uh, and I saw the number 18. I said, right, Klinsman. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully it brings me a little bit of luck. So when I saw that, obviously the number nine was available at, 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 um, at Rangers, so I mean... You know, it's a special number. And then obviously Jimmy Bell gave me some stick, the kick man at the club saying, well, if you're wearing that number nine shirt, mate, you've got to come around and score goals. So, you have to produce. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so well, that's to, be fair, to be fair, to be fair, Jimmy, and you did, you did. And I've got to say, I hope you enjoyed your time up at the club as much as the boys ever enjoyed having you because you seem to, you seem to have a really special and a, and a brilliant relationship with the fans, mate. Yeah, do you know what? I loved it, to be honest. And like, oh, I've said it many times and that obviously, Growing up, I always knew, obviously, Rangers is, you know, a big club and stuff like that. But it's not until you go there, you really get the feel. Yeah. And the magnitude of the football club. You walk in, you see all the sort of, like, um, all the pictures on the wall. Oh, the history there. All the history. So you really feel it. <clears throat> and then what I, what I wanted to do is, I wanted to speak and sort of, like, have a relationship with the people that have been there for years. There was a lady called Jean that um, she's, she left last year. Mm -hmm. And so I used to speak to Jean in the canteen. Yeah. She used to serve the food and that. And I used to... I what remember was he Gene. like? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. What was he like? Oh, what was guys like? What was Kosti like? And all these. And I was just, I was just fascinated with all the stories. And I'll sit down with Jimmy in his kit room and I say, ah, oh, tell me some funny stories about guys and Kosti. Like all these things. So <laughs> I think it's important to sort of like just buy into the culture yeah. and just like embrace <clears throat> it. Because I knew, you know, you know, when you get to sort of like the back end of your career and that, you have to, you have to enjoy every moment, every yeah. minute. Don't waste the training session. Just enjoy it because it goes quick, like you know. So I just went to buy into the culture and just. I suppose just enjoy it and, and, and it was great. Well, Jimmy, that was one of, that was one of the things I was going to ask you, pal, because looking at it, and obviously lots of messages when you said, you know, you were you, you were leaving the club and a lot of best wishes messages and goodwill messages, as you would expect and as you would hope and as you've earned. But yeah. when, I, when I was reading them all, mate, nearly every one of your teammates or ex-teammates to a man said, what a pro. So you obviously... Looked after yourself, and yeah. you obviously, as you as you correctly said, there towards the end of your career, you value every training session and treat it as probably as if it's your last. Yeah, and do you know what? It's it, the my teammates. Oh, mate, I get emotional. Ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant, mate. You actually are getting emotional. Oh no wonder. Yeah. Do you know what it is the the boys like they're unbelievable. The because the, you know what it's like. You you sign for a club, and then you, you obviously I come with a big reputation and that. But for me, all I wanted to do was just go there and win. You know, I was so desperate to win a league title. Oh. And like the boys were just like fantastic. Like I walked in, as you can imagine, they sort of like, they went, oh, it's sort of like JD sort of thing. They were just, they were just brilliant from day one. Like I mentioned about the staff, Jimmy, um, the women in the canteen, Katie, at the club who does all the admin, the stuff that she did um, for me. Obviously, I spoke to Katie the other day. I know Katie, yeah. Just had to thank her because above and beyond doing things like people that know the people that, that you know the things that you don't hear about um you know trying to find a house all these mm -hmm. sort of things so everyone at the football club but but the, my teammates were just special at the end of the day these boys especially the young lads i remember them saying to me i've got messages from some of the boys and they said oh do you know what like um they, they call me uncle <laughs> <So funny. laughs> joe and rebo ben kamara they call oh, me uncle God. and it's so funny at this stage of my career sort of like say i'll come in the gym and the lads will sort of like they'll be on their phones and stuff like that and uh, they'll be like, oh, uncle's coming, uncle's coming sort of thing. And then I'll say something to them and they're like, okay, uncle, okay. But it's just brilliant. But like, just that appreciation from the boys. And I remember, I think it was Joe Reba messaged me the other day, basically, nice message. I was honoured to play with your uncle. And he just said, you know what? We, we, I, I feel so blessed that I, I helped you. I, I, obviously, I, I contributed yeah. in, in helping you get that lead title and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, these are special people. Oh, mate, Jermaine, man. Honestly, yeah. God. I can remember it as if it was yesterday, man. I was the day the boys won that league. It was. It's on, I, I can't remember. I can't remember wanting to win anything as much as in my life as yeah. that as that title last year, mate. And just to see how much I phoned. I was coming up the road. I believe it or not. I was. I think it was at West Brom, Newcastle that morning that Celtic dropped the points up at Tannadice. 
Um, and just for the record, it was the worst game in the world, right? It really was. That's terrible. But, but I came back up, and and I, and the boys had won the league, and I phoned I phoned uh, Walter, God rest him, and Walter was <coughs> was actually just going into hospital. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I had a blur with him for about an hour, and the car coming up. And it was just magic. And then to come back up the road and see you boys, see you boys celebrating that man. Yeah, it was it was magical, Paul. It was yeah, brilliant. it's magical because the thing is, obviously, my family were from the east end of London, working class background. <clears throat> and when I when I signed, obviously, you drive around the city and stuff like that. You see the people and what they say to me, and just the way they are, it just reminds me of growing up in East London. Yeah, that working class background, and all they care about is football, and they just want to win. Yeah, and 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 it was and it was good for me because I knew well I realized straight away that you know you've come to this football club and it's about winning. Every game's like a cup final, and it's as simple as that. You have to perform, and it was it was good for me because obviously I left Bournemouth at the time. It was it was a difficult time for me when I left Sunderland and went to Bournemouth. Didn't play, <clears throat> and I sort of like when I signed for Rangers, I got that fire back. You know, I started playing, I was scoring goals. I was where I wanted to be in terms of like mentally, I was where I wanted to be. And it's just just great people up there, you know, just great people. The fans are special. I think they absolutely loved you as well because the switchboard is going mad. And and I think the thing is with with you, Jermaine, is when you go into a club and and you obviously give it everything that you've got because, like mm. you're saying, you you wanted to learn about the history of it. You wanted to yeah. um, really be a part of the community as well and know all the people <clears throat> behind the scenes. Um, you're obviously as well a big a big character a larger than life character and you and you had this role where um you were part of a four man caretaker team at rangers so it wasn't just um playing it was also yeah. mm -hmm. doing that side of of coaching as well was the balance hard to strike oh, it was hard do you know what it was hard for me because i'm so like i mentioned before at the top of the show like just <clears throat> football mad so yeah for me nothing's changed in terms of like preparation nothing's changed so obviously when you get given a a, a coaching role as well it was almost like, okay, then what do I focus on? Because it's like, if I have to focus on playing and coaching, it's like half and half, but I'm mm -hmm. just all in. With football, I'm just all in. Like I'll train, I'll stay behind off the train, I'll do my finishing. So for me, it was like, okay, then where do I do the coaching side of it? Because cause if you're a player coach and they obviously still wanted me to be available and ready just in case. So, cause they said that to me, so I thought, right, I need to be ready if called upon. So I have to do, I have to train as hard as everyone else. I have to sort of like stay behind and do all the extras that I've always done. Then I have to go in and do like the ice baths and massage and all that sort of stuff. So for me, it was like, where do I sort of like get the balance and where do I do the coaching stuff? But um, yeah, of course it was it was difficult because something that I've never done before. But um, at the same time, I feel like coaching is not just being on the pitch and putting cones out. I think coaching is also talking to people. So coaching, I've, I've been doing that for years in the building, probably 80% of it's probably talking to people in the building mm -hmm. or it's talking to the young lads, leading by example. Um, all these sorts of things that I feel like I've been doing for years anyway. Um, so but I enjoyed it, it was good. For me, the main thing was just winning. You know, that 55 league titles, you know, it's just something that would, no one can ever take that away from you. So um, I know Ali won, was it nine or 10? I was lucky, mate, I would, no, I was lucky. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but just to, 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 to get the one, I think if, I, if I'd gone to Rangers, because this was always at the back of my mind. When the first show, obviously, we didn't win. And I remember saying to the boys, if I, if I went to Rangers and didn't win anything, oh, it would hurt me so much. Yeah. It would hurt me so much because you see all the players that have won stuff out. So to, 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 to be on the list and a part, of, a part of history of that football club is special. Yeah. Um, honestly, the messages that we're getting in already, Jermaine, um, this one arrived at work at nine, sat in the car, glued to Jermaine's interview. What a guy. That's from Paul in Liverpool. We can't leave his car at the moment. Yeah. Um, this one's from Purple and he says, listening to I'm Jermaine Defoe on talk sport, such an intelligent soul, could listen to him all day. So underappreciated under as a Spurs hero as well. Um, should have been part of the Spurs backroom team. Um, Spurs also so deserved England, club, uh, England caps as well. Um, brilliant choice to get him on this morning. Um, loads of these messages coming in. I'm just going to keep reading them throughout the course of the morning. And we've got you for a whole hour. We are absolutely delighted. So much more to come. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.